Hello everyone, today I'd like to answer one of the questions that I've gotten a couple times, which is how do you resolve the issue of your Postgres database being on the same server as the rest of your application? Let's say you finally decided you wanna spend more money, so you decide to spin up like a dedicated database or something, but you wanna get your application data over. Now, of course, first things first, stop thinking about the data of your customers. You're not touching that yet. Let's just assume that you want to figure out the dirtiest way possible to get your data over there. You could probably just go find some stuff, copy paste it. There is an easier way to do it. And the way that we're gonna be testing this is by dumping our database from our development server, which is my local machine, to a droplet. So we're gonna pretend that this local machine here is my server. It's got like 10,000 monthly visitors or something and I wanna scale up for whatever reason. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this data onto a database that's on this droplet or something. Uh, I, again, don't know if this is the right way to do this, but the PG dump command exists for a reason. So we'll just go ahead and we'll give this a shot. I'm gonna be using DigitalOcean for this. So I come over here, click create, go to droplets. I choose New York because it's closest to me. I come over to the marketplace and for this one, I'm just going to choose a Ruby on Rails server. You could of course choose a Postgres server, but it'll be faster if I uh, use the Ruby on Rails one because it comes with Postgres and I already know where all of the files and stuff are. So we can just mess around with it a bit more easily and it'll let you see that things are actually working. I'm gonna go ahead and do the regular with a $12 a month, choose an SSH key. And then I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm gonna name this PG-dump. Uh, and then we can go ahead and create this droplet. While that's running, we're gonna do a Rails new video. Uh, and then we're gonna do a dash D for Postgres QL. And then we'll go ahead and we'll run that. Again, I could just, you know, pop into the Postgres database, but I feel like it paints the picture a little bit better if I just use Rails commands when we go to check if the stuff is actually in there. Uh, but in like the real world, you probably wouldn't want to, first of all, listen to me for something like this, but also uh, you probably wouldn't want to uh, use like a Rails, a Rails image for this, but I, I think it'll work a little bit better. I'll go ahead and CD into the video, run a code dot, uh, and then we can hopefully uh, go ahead and start this. So I'm gonna do this, close out of these files that don't exist. Uh, and now what, first thing I need to do is a rails db colon drop because on my local machine, I probably already have a video database, which I do. Uh, now what we want to do is a bundle add for faker and devise because we're going to be creating some fake data real quick. I'll go ahead and run. Then we can do a rails g scaffold post with a title and a body of type text. And then we can do a uh, rails g device colon install command again and then we can do a rails g device user command so that'll work for our test data let's or for our like test scaffolds or whatever next let's come into our seeds file in our seeds file i want to do a couple things uh, first one's going to be a user.create for a email the email will be dean at example.com we then need to give it a password and a password confirmation we'll go ahead and we'll copy this Paste it down here twice. First one will change to John uh, at doe.com. Oops, that's doe.com. We'll go ahead and we'll paste this down here. We'll change this one to Jane at doe.com. That gives us our uh, users. Let's go ahead and let's create 50 posts with Faker. Uh, 50 times do. Let's say a post.create. It'll have a title and a body. And that looks good. We'll go ahead and we'll save this. Next, I'll come over here. I'll do a Rails DB colon uh, migrate because uh, we've already created that. Oops, I have to do a Rails DB colon create. I guess we haven't already created that. That'll create our database. Now we want to migrate it. So we'll do the migrate. Just doing this in separate steps so that no one asks what steps I skipped here. Uh, and then we can do a Rails DB colon seed. This will take a second because it is inserting 53 records. But now we can do a Rails C, do a post.count. Oops, sorry. We can do a post.count. Uh, and we can see there's 50 posts. We can do a post.first, see what that looks like. We can also do a user.first and see what that looks like. So all of that seems fine. We definitely have data in here. Now we want to come into our remote server. So let's go ahead and let's SSH as root uh, at this IP address. Copy this again and paste it. There we go. 
Uh, we'll say yes. Hopefully it'll let us in. Looks like it will. Uh, so it's going to yell at us for permissions. So what I'm going to do is something that you shouldn't do. Uh, but I'm just going to give my, I think my Rails user is the one I use here maybe. Uh, so I'm going to give the Rails user like super user permission. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, su into... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sudo dash u into Postgres or with the Postgres user into PSQL. And then once we're in here, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to give the uh, Rails user the owner permissions and I'm going to give them the super user permissions. Again, bad practice, don't do this, uh, but this will just let me modify the database real quick as the Rails user. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to sudo into Rails or switch user into Rails. And then in here, it should be in slash home slash uh, example or slash Rails slash example. There we go. Now this is our Rails app on the server. What we can do is we can, uh, let's do a quick little nano into config slash database.yaml. And then here we can see we have a example development database, right? So this is what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna remember this name uh, and I'll go ahead and hit control X and say no. Now on the server, real quick, I'm just going to do something like a scaffold for a post and a title of uh, type text and a, or sorry, title of type string and a body of type text. And then I'll go ahead and I'll add device as well. We'll say rails G or we got to do a bundle. We'll do bundle add device. Uh, you know, I do this like 40 times per week. You would think by now I know the order of these commands Do a bundle add device. Then we can do a, uh, rails g device colon install command and then we can do a rails g device user command again this stuff you can pretty much just skip if you have like a postgres database this is unnecessary you would just be connecting to this database i'm just doing this because it'll make it a bit cooler to see uh, but that gives us that we can then do a rails db colon migrate command uh, because we gave our rails user permissions okay it looks like that worked uh, let's do a Rails C real quick so you know I'm not lying to you. And in here, we'll do a post.count. You can see there's zero posts, user.count. Uh, and then you can see there's zero users. Okay, cool. I'm going to go ahead and hit Control D to exit out of here. And then I'm going to hit Control D again to disconnect from this. Now we're going to enter the command that will hopefully allow us to do this. So we're going to start with a PG underscore dump for video underscore development. Now, if you need to create the database, uh, let's say you haven't already created it, you want to pass in a dash C flag for video development. Uh, but if you don't need to create the database, you can just do PG dump video development. Now this right here is gonna dump out all of your data. Now this is gonna look scary, but hopefully you have good security practices in place where seeing this data doesn't bother you because it's just posts and seeing your encrypted user passwords isn't a big deal because they're still encrypted. Of course, if you can just see it, uh, I would question your security, but you know, I've seen more questionable things just on college campuses, if I'm being quite frank. Okay, so this is our data. Well, let's continue. We're going to take this and we're going to pipe this into bzip2. Again, you can run this, it'll yell at you saying you can't run this on a terminal, uh, but it always helps to take these intermediate steps so you can just see sort of what happens. Then we're gonna SSH in as root at and then the IP address of our droplet. Again, this is where this command could change. You could SSH in as a specific user that has appropriate permissions. In my case, I've just set up this droplet. I don't have anything else set up. I'm just gonna SSH in as root, which means I'm gonna have to switch users when I get in there. So my final command here is gonna be inside of quotes. This is gonna be b unzip to pipe this to sudo dash u postgres just like we did before where we did postgres psql to log in as the postgres user into the psql database and then we want to enter whatever our uh whatever our database name is which i think we had uh example underscore development and then we end our quotes here we can go ahead and run this and we'll get an error here that says the role dean does not exist it also say there's duplicate keys and multiple primary keys for posts, etc. So the first things first, where's this role Dean coming from? That's because on this server, Dean is the role that I used for this uh, Postgres database. So in this case, what we have to do is we would have to create the same role on the remote. 
So the way you would do that is you would once again SSH in as whatever the IP address is. And then in here you have to do a sudo dash u or postgres and psql and then in here you want to create a role with your login or whatever so role of dean with login or you could alternately create a role with a password by also passing in a password or if you wanted to you could create a role with a password and permissions here if you wanted to in my case that role already exists uh, but you get the idea so now I'm going to go ahead and control D out of here and then I'm going to control D out of here. And now we're going to go ahead and run this command again with that Dean account already existing. Now you can see in here set and a whole bunch of altered tables, uh, but you're going to see a bunch of stuff where the relations already exist here. You can see it affected 50 rows here. You can see it affected three. So this is the users. This is the posts. Uh, if we SSH back into our server and we can do a SU rails, we can then CD into slash home slash rails slash example. We can do a rail C and do a post dot count again. You can see there's uh, 50 posts in here. We can do post dot all, and this is all of our posts. We can also do a user dot all. You can see the users are here as well. So. This is now effectively your database with the exact same data as the other one. So it doesn't have to be super complicated. You don't need to like copy and paste files or email your whole database file or whatever. You can do all of this with just a quick little uh, SSH command uh, that just runs through the PG dump. Now there are a couple ways to do this. I think there's a way to do this command where it's not compressed, uh, but in this case, uh, I think think the compressed version is usually going to be more helpful. Uh, but you know, again, you can just look up this PG dump command and you can figure out whatever you need to do for your specific use case. Uh, the PG dump here is for backing up your data and then PSQL is for uh, restoring it, right? So you, if you only want to back up your data, you can also do this as like a separate command. That's ultimately up to you. This is just something I wanted to bring to people's attention because I've had people ask me if they should be like emailing this stuff to themselves or if they should be d d installing FileZilla to move their databases or stump something. And like there's there's commands for this. So definitely look into stuff like the PG dump if that's something that you need. Now, alternatively, you can also sort of change the order you want to do stuff in. Uh, where you can do something. I've actually got, I managed to find something that covers roughly this. Uh, you can see here this answer uh, that says you can do either uh, the local to remote or the remote to local with more info in this link as well. I'll link both of these in the video description if this is something that you're interested in learning more about. Um, but that is unfortunately all I have time for today because it is 3.40 and I do have to actually do stuff tomorrow. Uh, so being up at 3.40 a.m. is already not great. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully this at least was informative and interesting and hopefully I will see you in the next one.